Hello, Gripaholics. This is episode 106 of This Week in Grip. Today, we're going to cover the legendary Bone Hill Grip Contest organized by Arto Jeronen, along with tons of feats that have gone down recently. But I just want to tell you about the newly updated Grip Sport International website, gripsportint.com. We've got listings of upcoming contests, rankings, and top 100s, with plenty more coming your way. So head on over today and check it out. While you're at it, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any videos or episodes of This Week in Grip. Make sure to give us a big thumbs up, brother, if you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget we're all doing this out of the love for grip sport. And one more thing, everybody. Don't forget the first rule of grip sport. You tell everyone about grip sport. And now, here's episode 106 of This Week in Grip. And this is episode 106 of This Week in Grip. I'm joined by Alan T. Heineck Esquire and, of course, Professor Crowbar himself, James Rodriguez. And I want to welcome Mr. William Mollett to the TGA website. He is a new member since uh, this summer and looking forward to working with him on all of his grip training goals. Plenty of updates there on the site, so make sure to join today for just $1. Plenty of stuff going on in the world of grip today, but the first thing we wanted to hear about was from James. He says he just had a nightmare with the Euro. What the heck happened over there, James? Tell us all about it. Uh, It's my first time ever having to actually transport a Euro in a vehicle. Mm -hmm. So... have you guys ever seen the the video of the tire that's like ro- it's like a wheel it's rolling down the interstate and then it hops over the the, the median and like smashes into a, a, an SUV on the other side? No, yeah, maybe. Uh, but. I thought I thought you were gonna tell me about the one James where the tire clocked that dude in the head. I saw that video recently. That sucked. Oh well, that almost happened, it, but it <laughs> happened like inside my vehicle with the Euro. So, you know, they're not easy to secure. Like, I, I, I think the next time I have to move one, I'm going to put it, like, in a seat with a seatbelt on it because I had it in the back, and I had my two 45s. I had two uh, deep-dish York 45s that are actually – I'm, I'm going to bring them up to Legends. They're uh, – uh, uh, Anthony Vassaturo bought them, so I'm going to bring them up to him. Um, and no, I can't pinch them before anyone asks. And, uh, and, and, and I had my Euro, and, and, and I had a few phone books, and I thought I had it, like, in the back situated nicely where it wouldn't roll. And then, like, I took one turn, okay? And, like, I, you guys probably aren't familiar with Charlotte, and, and maybe one or two of the people who listen will be, but Interstate 74, it's not even an interstate, it's Route 74. It's like it, people treat it like it's Raceway Park. You know, you know, and there are 83 Dotsons flying around. And there's this one part where I'm coming around a curve, and, and, I, and I correct. The guy almost hits me. I hit the brakes. The Euro rolls up and almost clocks me in the elbow. And now it's like, it's like a freaking pinball back there. And it's rolling around, bouncing off of shit. And I'm like, I, there's nowhere to pull over. There's nowhere to pull over. So I'm like, okay, well. I guess I, this is just going to be this way until I can get off the exit and, and, and finally, like, secure it. And I had to find a way to move my seat to put it in the bottom and keep it in. It was just a, it was a nightmare. It was a nightmare. And the worst part about it is, like, my wife always says, like, oh, you know, you're always leaving, like, chalk and stuff inside when you're moving weights. And, 
And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know. I'll try to be, you know, more conscious of that. Yeah, well, there's no chalk on the inside of the back of my SUV now, but there's a lot of scratches and, <laughs> and like, dents, and I tore a little bit of the upholstery. Like, it's a – yeah, yeah. Well, so, <clears throat> but Jason has it now, and he's going to weigh it for our competition. So. I see. <sighs> yeah. Well, so if you don't mind my asking, James – why didn't you just take the yeah. plates off of the pipe before you carted it around? Because I'm lazy, Jed. Because oh, I'm a lazy son of a bitch. <laughs> because I thought about that. I did. I thought about that. I was like, yeah, I could just take the pipe off and then, you know, just lay the plates down. But I'm like, you know what? I just loaded up all those plates and, you know, the, the sledgehammers. And I'm like, you know, I'll just, I'll just put it in here like this and I'll secure it between two plates. Well, Guys don't do that type idea. of shit, Jed. That's like making two trips. We only make one. It we is. just overload shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was like, this will work, right? I mean, if it doesn't work, what's the worst thing that can happen? Well, we figure that out, what the worst thing is that could happen. So yeah, you, you lost that, your elbow. I won't be doing it that way. I, I would have done the Man, same thing. thing blew up. <laughs> I had to hit the brakes, and that thing just rolled up like a perfect, like just rolled up perfectly. And almost cracked my elbow. I mean, it came like centimeters from it. So, yeah, which would have really screwed up my lever top training, of all things. So, so yeah, I'm, uh, yeah. It's been Are you driving up to Living Legends? Uh, yes, I am. I'm going to drive up with uh, Mr. Porkchop San Diego, who today, gentlemen, for the first time in his life, got a full lift with 245's pinch. Nice. Um, and Mr. Gary Stewart. So, so yep. the three of us will be driving up. I don't you know, know if you get to drive at home. You, man. you don't have a great track record. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I even asked Gary, I said, who's driving? And he's like, man, I think you have to. And I was like, all right. You well, wait till you see the damage that, a, an inch dumbbell could do. Yeah, there. exactly. <laughs> That'll smash some shit up. Right, right. Well, that's yeah, at least the last back. time I rolled a vehicle <laughs> over. At least the last time when I rolled a vehicle over, it was just a dumbbell rack in the back, you know? If I actually had weights, I wouldn't be on this conversation. <laughs> put it that way. You guys would have heard about my funeral, because neither one of you bastards would have showed up. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's my, that's my Euro experience for, for the day, you know? And I still didn't even pinch 200 on the son of a bitch today. So, you know... Well, I guess next time you're going to use yeah. the flask then, huh, James? Yeah, yeah. That thing, <laughs> that thing found the recycling bin where it belongs a long time ago. The so. <laughs> I had to. <laughs> <laughs> well, so what is see, going on in your world? Did you, see, did you see in the grip strength group where, uh, um, oh, what's his name, Ivan... Bear Tashley wasn't even aware of uh, the existence of barrel strength systems. Oh, really? Yeah, so <clears throat> Jesse Pignon oh, is the video. That's of, a magnetic quarter guy. I know who he is. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> Jesse Pignon put up a video of like, like 750 pounds or something like that on the shallow hub. How much was it, Alan? <laughs> He hit seventy five point eight. All right, seventy five point eight, and um, he was like, "Why is this? Did David change his rules? I didn't think you're allowed to grab it with a doorknob technique." And someone said it was from Barrel Strength Systems. It's a different implement, and he's like, he wasn't even aware that they were in existence. So like, Ivan must be like totally, totally out of this. I I, I thought he just wasn't competing for a while, Alan. I mean, you know who I'm talking about, right? This guy, this guy was on the International Grip Collective when it was still active. So I, know, I, was, I actually didn't yeah, know his name. Surprised. Yeah, I know. What he was is. his name? Yes. Ivan Barrett He's been busy. Huh. Um, yeah. He's, he he ran. A, uh, he ran. A, oh, I do know around. the name. I just I, I envisioned the different. It's it's the way you're pronouncing it. It's what threw me off. Okay. Well, okay. I don't know how you pronounce it, dude. That's that's how. I, that's I don't. How I, I don't either. Maybe James can. He's he's good with the pronunciations. Here. 
I don't know. When he was accusing me of using magnetic quarters on my hammer lifts, I was calling him Valerie Bertichelli. I Why are you going with Barrett's kind of feeling? But thing. that's probably way off too. But now I definitely know who we're talking about. Well, uh, there is a Valeri. Yeah. There's a Valerian grip too, isn't there? Yeah. There is a Valeri. I, I, yeah. I, I, I just, just remember. Uh, who was it? Was it Valerie Bertinelli who married uh, uh, Eddie Van Halen? Was that who it was? Yes. So I was calling yes. him Valerie Bertinelli. I thought it was pithy. I thought it was pithy. So, um, so, yeah. But, uh, no, he's been out of the loop. Apparently he's been engaging in hand-to-hand combat at the Ukrainian border. So he hasn't been around. Are you being for real? So. No, I'm, of course I'm not being for real. Okay. <laughs> you said it pretty straight, man. I was like, damn. Yeah, I know. I well, know. I'm very fluent in sarcasm, Jed. Well, yeah, and I need to I need to take a brush up course, I guess. Holy yeah, cow. me too, actually. Me too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned Jesse Pinonian, and i got to say something, because I really wanted to say it in the last show. The two pinch feats that I saw recently that just blew my mind was Adam Glass going almost 250, two-handed on the flask, 250 pounds, and, 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 and the way that Jesse's been manhandling those 255s is just, yeah. I mean, For multiple it's reps right-handed. Ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. So it, that just that blows my mind. Is he going to be at Legends, do we know? No. He's no, not. He's, not. Okay. he's training. He's training for King Kong and some some strongman competition. He's he's up there in weight. He's over three hundred pounds now. He was looking big. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I was I was surprised. He's I didn't realize he was there. gaining, but he's yeah he's definitely thickening up. So do we uh, did we did we get any kind of like? Uh, I mean, I have a competitors list that I got from Andrew for Legends. And it's got some names of international competitors, but do we do we know who's confirmed coming? I only know of Thomas Larson and uh, Hilda Holtebau. Okay. Okay. Well, that'll be uh, well. It'll be of really course high. Eric Rusin, Rusin as well, but uh, yeah, yeah. You know, he might as well be from America, I guess. Yeah, oh, he's from here. Canada. It's like <laughs> it's basically the diet America. So. So I don't I don't consider that international. I'm talking Diet about America is side. Canada. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I like that. That's fine. I think I've heard that before, yeah. but <laughs> Hey, you know, something that happened like a couple weeks ago. I know we got a whole topic that we're going to be talking about with the Bone Hill Grip competition, but um Becca Roberts won Europe's strongest woman yeah. like, last month. Yes, and that was one of the things I wanted to talk about today too. Uh, I think that's so awesome that she did that. She is. I completely uh, missed that. You know, well, we spoke a bit about her when we had Jerome Bloom on, and um, you know, he had made the comment that you know she probably wouldn't be doing as much grip stuff because you know she's kind of in her wheelhouse right now in terms of age and and and, and strength level to be uh, competing in in, in, in you know uh, strong woman competition. So, so for her to win the world's strongest, I mean, uh, Europe's strongest woman, that's. Uh, that's huge. That's really cool. Yeah, all right. Well deserved. She works hard. And I guess she's coming here, huh? They're going to do World's Strongest Woman uh, in Florida? Is that how that's going? Oh, I don't know. I just so figured I, it would be. I hadn't heard that either. That's awesome. <laughs> Good for her. Yeah. Florida. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool. Why Florida? Uh, All because the cool wasn't stuff the goes on World's in Texas. Strongest Man. Yeah, I think World's Strongest Man was in Bradenton, Florida. That's true. You're right. Wanna guess? So, so I think that's where they're doing uh, World's Strongest Woman as well, but I could be wrong. I just thought I saw in a post where she was talking about uh, trying to uh, get sponsorship or raise money to, to get over here for that. So... Yeah, I just didn't catch that. Uh, I saw that, too, um, for the sponsorship thing. I just didn't happen to catch where she would be traveling to. Yeah. 
You know, so, more stuff on. I'm looking at my notes from the last couple of weeks, dude. I mean, Jesse Pinon has yeah. been on a on a tear. Like, yeah, I, I copied a post at some point. This is like word for word his post. Weak thick bar improving as I was able to lift our heaviest thick bar dumbbell, a 61 millimeter with uh, slash 2.4 inch handle, weighing 90 kilograms, 198.4 pounds. <laughs> I'm trying to keep wow. my hand at the center of the handle to prevent tilting it, but this dumbbell is super long and massive. James? Yeah. No. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> I guess it's time to start saving uh, money for Millennium-type circus dumbbell. So 198 pounds, uh, thick bar dumbbell that he, this man is lifting. That's That's up there, dude. That's up there. That's amazing, yeah. Especially at that length, because I actually saw that. That's uh, that's a ridiculous uh, feat right there. Yeah, dude. And uh, what about your uh, your buddy Luke there, with a half one thirty blob that he lifted yeah. the other day? Well, that's, let me tell you uh, something, man. <laughs> he's he's broken that thing off the ground hundreds of times, about two and a half inches three inches, four inches, and then he usually, his delicate skin pops open on his thumb. It looks like you sat down yeah. and popped a seam of your, the, the seam in the ass of your pants every time he tries to lift the thing. So I thought it was a feat just that he would able to be able to put his hand on it without popping his thumb open. So that was, that was cool <laughs> enough. That was a breakthrough. But then, uh, then he yanked it maybe like eight inches. And we were like, whoa, and we knew that, that something special might be happening. And before you know it, he lifts the thing six times right-handed. So uh, that's wow. all in one session. So, uh, yeah, that was that was that's a awesome. fantastic day. Nice, so, yeah, congratulations. Sounds like, uh, sounds like Luke will be peaking for uh, the Legends event as well. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, he's, how's I mean, your training it, going for Legends? How's the training going for Legends? Pretty good. I put in four yeah, hours good. yesterday, good. roughly, of training for Legends and a little bit of King Kong. Uh, Luke was not there. He was in Erie at a super match, arm wrestling tournament, and he had a super match, and then he was running a a grip challenge with the crane scale. I got a text at, like, 1 p.m. saying that the crane scale was not working. Then I never heard anything else, so I don't know. I don't know if they were able to resolve the issue or what. But um, anyway, that's been going around with crane scales yesterday. lately. What's that, Alan? That's been going around with crane scales lately. Did it was it was it reading in the wrong unit? But it yeah, when the other he one? when he case? when he put it on, uh, it, it looked like it was. <laughs> pounds, but it was actually Sorry, got it. The, 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 manu, the manufacturer screwed everything up, and uh, yeah. <laughs> they were like, "Oh, that's that's a decent pull, fifty fifty pounds." No, that's kilos. No, I don't. I don't know. I don't know what exactly was going on with the scale, but I don't think it was the. Uh, I don't think it was the same manu- um the same malfunction that was taking place a couple weeks ago with another certain gentleman's crane scale. Sure, sure. Ah. Okay. <laughs> oh boy. Well, hopefully, you know, hopefully it didn't screw up his whole his whole little contest he was running because that sucks. That's, well, that's an epic wrench and things. Yeah, there's uh, just about impossible to. All all I know that he took with him was the crane scale, some handles for the crane scale, and the inch dumbbell and blob. So I suppose he could have run a competition with the inch dumbbell and blob, but I don't know what kind he was going to, what he's going to run. He said only one person <laughs> lifted it all day. Um, so I don't know the blob. They they could have had something with, I guess maybe more people lifted the blob, but most consecutive drags or something. <laughs> yeah. Longest drag down the hallway. Maybe. <laughs> Hard to tell. Oh, man. But, you know, speaking so of block uh, weights, yeah. speaking weeks? of block weights, uh, we were talking, I was talking with Sean Capusta on Instagram. It was on, it was actually on Jerome Bloom's, one of his 
key pinch posts. I don't know if you guys saw this. I thought it was kind of funny. We got into a little exchange. So you uh, and John. Yeah, me and Cap. Okay. So it's the King Hub uh, post that Jerome put up. I said, I'm going to see Key Pinch in my fucking nightmares. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, uh, Jerome goes, sorry, dude, with like the crying, laughing face. <laughs> and Sean yeah. goes, Key Pinch is the grip NWO, brother, which NWO is a reference to late 90s pro wrestling, Alan, so I know that. Yes, I, I do. I, I, I got that one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, fine. One. Finally, finally, you were able to get a, a <laughs> wrestling reference. Wasn't, wasn't Hollywood Hulk Hogan in that one? Was that yeah, Hollywood was. days? Okay. Yeah. For a while, yeah, Alan, thank you. Thank you, See? dude. Finally. <laughs> finally. I'll took, edit out the show years. so that my busting on you doesn't take place, and I'll make it sound like you really didn't know what you were talking about. Sure. I, and yeah. I said, no, Sean, NWO was cool. Key pinches the Mean Street Posse. Do you know what that is, Alan? No, no, you lost me now. Okay. <laughs> I tried hanging in there, but you, you took it to the next level. Yeah. He goes, he goes Key Pinch is four horsemen cool. Blobs are J-O-B squad, job squad. Man, killing me. <laughs> and I just had to, I wrapped it up with an LOL at that point. <clears throat> So, good constructive uh, banter going on on Instagram there. That was that was quite fun. But uh, I actually asked. Uh, I'm sure you guys have seen the coin pinch challenge. I tried to get like a description uh, yeah. of the, the rules and stuff from Jerome, but he must not have been online uh, at all today. Or maybe I sent it when he's already getting his beauty sleep. But I didn't hear back from him. But uh, there seems to be several people doing this. Do you guys know the specifics of the coin pinch challenge? Yeah, no, it's like a roll of quarters that you, that you like attach to something to a loading pin and lift it. Yeah, that one, yeah. Yeah. Like, the, like yeah. I was going to have him send the rules so we could many talk about it. Or, yeah. Yeah, I was unsure of how many quarters you use or right. something like that, but I... I have seen people doing it for sure. Yeah, I think John Oka was actually yeah. the first one I saw doing it, but uh, but then I very, yeah, maybe I'm very sure possible John started that right. Yeah. So, but no, I don't know the specifics. So. Okay. Well, we'll have to table I'm that. As, bring uh, up another time. I'm as out of the loop when it comes to key pins. I'm as out of the loop as you are, Jed. And uh, happy to be out of the loop on key pitch, I might add. Um, though I will say, because I know I'm, you know, probably as hard on some of these lifts as Jed is, maybe harder, it uh, doesn't mean that I'm not impressed with the people that can do, you know, crazy weights on those because, you know, it, it is very difficult. It requires a lot of strength. And obviously everything Jerome Bloom does is impressive. So, so Yeah. I can yeah, say something sure. like that and still hate on the list. So, yeah, lots of impressive so numbers it. out there, James. I, I'm, I'm with you there. <laughs> Any other feats to mention, guys, yeah. before we go into Bone Hill? Or I, I, I got one quick one. I saw um, just a quick congratulations to Anthony uh, Clarino for finally nailing that MM zero cert. It was just posted on the grip board. Oh, I know cool. he he posted about that some years oh, back. Great. I know he had he had gotten a somewhat unofficial close and he never uh he never submitted it or anything like that, but it was something he was working on. So um I know I've missed a few others with regards to, you know, that lately, but I just wanted to throw that out there. Cool. And if anybody's looking for anything else to watch online besides uh grip videos, I wanted to share this new channel that I got. I already, I already told everybody about John Boy Media, which I'm sure that James has totally ignored once again yeah. and hasn't watched a damn mm-hmm. thing of. But. No, see, that's, see that's, that's where you're wrong. You totally ignored my response to one of your posts about it. Which one? I was telling you about, you know, a couple of the ones. You had, you had posted something yeah. from John Boy Media and, yeah. and, and and I posted in response about one of the other ones that I saw, and I can't remember which one it was and how funny it was. And you never even, like, you just left me hanging, man. You left Damn. Me <laughs> what an so what have I missed here? What is this, John Boy Media? 
John Boy Media, dude. So it's the guy takes Matt. the guy takes clips from Major League Baseball and does like ninety second to maybe you know two and a half minutes on certain clips of the game. Now, what he normally hones in on are ejections of players and managers, controversial oh. <laughs> plays where they need to do, like, replays. Like, do you know that Major League Baseball instituted instant replay reviews, like, a few years back? I, I didn't. That's a good idea, though. Yeah. Yeah. So, and they're almost always, like, super controversial and he'll go in there and read lips and like the shit that you wouldn't even understand people are ta- are saying like he reads it perfectly it's it's it really enhances oh, wow. the, the experience and then so, um, sometimes he'll yeah. put subtitles up it's pretty funny he's not like an infinite elgin intensity then it's kind of a different way no he's not no he's not putting his take on there at all he's just like okay he's just enhancing the commentary basically ah uh, i see i see okay it's really good but um, what I've been watching lately, well, I've been watching a good share of John Boy Media, but also Minty Comedic Arts. Minty Comedic Arts. So, like, right now I'm watching, uh, I'm in the middle of 10 Amazing Facts About The Shining. And, uh, well, that's all interesting. Uh, yeah, craziest movie fan theories. Um, 10 Things You Didn't Know About Flash Gordon. Ten things you didn't know about Never Ending Story. Ten amazing facts about Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Okay, okay. Um, well, what's the name of this again? Minty. <laughs> you definitely got my attention. Minty, okay. Minty. It's all like, it's all, they're basically all like late 70s, early awesome. 80s, and early 90s movies that he does. Minty, okay. M-I-N-T-Y, comedic arts. All, like three <laughs> different words. Sure. Like, did you know? Did you know that uh, there's a fan theory about uh, Greece that Danny and whatever Livy Newton John's character's name is are dead throughout the movie? No. Or in a, in a coma, going. rather. In a coma. <laughs> okay. Like, apparently, Danny like saves her from drowning in the ocean at the beginning of the movie. I don't even remember this. Yeah, it's like a dream or something. I guess. Like, the whole Clear. movie is a dream. It's, Why do we even need that dreams. twist on it? <laughs> How? Because no. uh, there's a couple things. Like, one thing, at the end of the movie, they fly off in a car in the Grease Lightning into the sky. And okay. during the movie uh, Grease Lightning, or, no, Summer Lovin', uh, Danny says something like, I saved her from almost drowning, or she was almost drowning, or something Okay, like I do. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Wow, somebody's got a lot of time on their hands to go through and dream all that shit up. Like, put that on Yeah, there. people do that stuff. I saw one uh, one time where they were saying, like, in The Big Lebowski, that Donnie from The Big Lebowski was actually a figment of Walter's imagination. That Walter, like, came back from the war and was, like, seeing Donnie. Like, Donnie could have been one of his ex-military buddies or something. That, that died, and he's still kind of, you know, like, some kind of, you know... I, I don't know, some kind of symptom of post-traumatic stress disorder, that he's having visual hallucinations. But it, it, it's like you hear these theories, and then if you watch the movie, you see that, that the dude talks to Donnie at points in the movie. So obviously Donnie's real. So I don't know. Well, uh, I also watched one, I think it was from the same guy, that said that um, Marla Singer in Fight Club is also a figment of Jack's imagination. I was just going to bring up the Fight Club thing. We were talking about, yeah, okay. Huh. Interesting. Well, yeah, yeah I, that's possible. I can see where that is at least plausible. Yeah. So, so anyway, Bone Hill. <laughs> <laughs> one more thing. One more thing not related to Grip. I got, I got to ask. Do you have any idea, James, what was going on with the uniforms yeah. that the Dodgers and Yankees were wearing in their game yesterday? I didn't see it, man. Yesterday... Oh man! Yesterday I didn't. Yesterday I was actually at a baseball game. I was at a minor league baseball game. Right. But I went. It was a doubleheader, and I didn't go until like five something because yesterday morning. That's the reason why we actually trained today rather than yesterday. The guys were nice enough to switch days. Yesterday I went for like a five mile hike with uh, the people I work with from my practice. So I went straight from the hike to the baseball games. 
and I just didn't get a chance to see anything sports related yesterday. So, so why? What was going on with them? Well, hold on. Did you just say that you were nice enough to switch days so that you could go to no, a minor league were. baseball game? No. Just Is that what you said? They were nice enough. No, oh, they were. They okay. were. Jason. All right. Yeah, Jason, Gary, Bob. Bob actually wants to do uh, Sundays from now on, he said, which is, you know, it's a little problematic with football season starting, but I digress. Um, But uh, they switched from Saturday to Sunday so that I could go on a hike with, with, um, you know, some of my coworkers, my colleagues, and whatnot. All right. Sorry. That's a sucker deal. Five-mile hike. Five-mile hike. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, up above. I'll tell you what, I haven't even heard of this until like a few weeks ago. It's called Stone Mountain, because I've been on Stone Mountain. Ha, 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 I have no idea what James just said. That just came through so garbled, and it was so funny that I had to belly laugh. Did you hear that, Alan? Or were you able no, to it was it was really him? static. It was there was too much static. I didn't get it. it was like was it was it self editing or something? <laughs> All right, assholes. How about now? Are we good? Yep. So what I was saying before I was rudely interrupted or turned into a robot by my phone. <laughs> um, I, I was at Stone Mountain in North Carolina, and the, the hike up, like the, act, the loop itself is like four and a half miles, but you can kind of go off to the waterfalls. There's high, middle, and lower waterfalls, and they're like huge. And uh, it was one of the nicest hikes I've ever been on. So it was, uh, it was pretty cool. But it took, it took like five, six hours. And... Um, you know, then went, grabbed a burger and a beer, and went right to the game. So I missed, I missed uh, the Yankees and, uh, what was the Yankees-Dodgers you said played yesterday? Yeah, man. Um, I'm still trying to figure out the uniforms. Uh, the Dodgers were decked out in all white, and the, the lettering on the, on the uniforms was literally white on white. Zero contrast. Like, I couldn't okay. even I, – I don't know the players anyway. I was trying to read their names. No no such luck. Then on the Yankees uniforms – Were the uniforms, uniforms – uh, Huh? Were they in, like, Braille or something? Was it, like, blind I, person a women's day or something? Ball well, ball? I'll turn to John Boy Media for a clip because <laughs> I'll see. Like, they got these weird socks on, like they're going to go golfing afterwards. And I oh. think the names are on the back of their shirts, man, but it's, 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 it's white print on white – clothing yeah and then the yankees are in black they must have been so freaking hot in that sun and the like i don't know it was uh they got the old-timey wool uniforms on too is it like that no that would be cool if they did but they don't oh so it's It's, like it's weird man helen keller day it was helen keller day at the ballpark (laughs) so they put like all the uh the names in braille on the back of the jersey Well, and then, like, the one thing you could read was the names on the back of the Yankees players, but they weren't their names. Like What? Yeah, Yeah. like, it had other stuff on on the back of their, like, it had their nicknames or something. Like, um, I think it was the the same with Dodgers. The the managers, uh, the manager for the Dodgers' name uh, is escaping me right now, but it said Doc on his back, D-O-C. And then wow. I, I, when I was watching the game, Aaron Judge was up, and he ended up striking out, if I remember correctly. But his, his, uh, his jersey said, like, like a four-letter name or something like that. And the Yankees don't even have their names on their, on their clothes. Yeah, that's weird. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Some weird. It's really bizarre. Yeah. For all I know, every Major League Baseball team was dressed like that, but I'm not sure. My daughter was like, oh, it must be blackout and whiteout day. I'm like, how the hell do you know? (laughs) (laughs) So if it turns out that it was blackout and whiteout day, I'm going to be pissed. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. My guess is blind person awareness day. You know, you have the white on white. You know, the name in Braille. 
did the pitcher go out with like when they did mound visits? Did they come out with like a white king, or was it? Uh... <laughs> I didn't see any white canes. I didn't see any seeing eye dogs, bro. I didn't. I I don't know. Oh, but... would be even better. That would be amazing. You see the guy come out of the bullpen with a white cane and dark glasses, like Ray Charles. Got a little got a little German Shepherd at his side, taking him to the mound. <laughs> Ah, uh, wow. So, Bonehill. <laughs> so, Bonehill. <laughs> so, uh, thank you to James for tagging me on the post so I could find the results. And uh, uh, I think maybe uh, J- Jerome tagged us earlier. I think he might have said James. So, yeah. Uh, and then thanks for uh, to Circo Peterman for actually putting this post up on Facebook. So it's the Bone Hill Record Breakers. Is this the right contest, Record Breakers, or is there was there there must have been a different contest, right? This is like something else, right? Oh boy, I'm trying what? to find it right now. Because there were there were two contests. There was like the Bone Hill Grip competition, and then there was uh, the Record Breakers. Was the Record the Breakers? Was, yeah, I was gonna say. Okay, so the Record Breaker might have been the next day, sort of thing. Yeah. I mean, we got tagged in so many posts that weekend, it was unbelievable. So, yeah. it was like, it, it, at some point, it got hard to keep up. Yes. Uh, trying to find it right now. Have you, have you seen anything at all? I mean, it's I already... I found one of Jerome's posts here, but I haven't... Uh, I don't see results or anything. Circo posts so much, dude, that it's already buried. Like, I'm I'm already deep, deep into his page, and I'm not even close. I don't think. <laughs> Bone Hill. All right, this is just a review. Oh, let's see here. That's just that's just Circo's performance, I think. Oh, darn. oh okay. There is a spreadsheet looking deal here. <clears throat> Here we go. Yeah, it's from Circo. I can't see anything in this, though. It's so small. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember that one, too. Well, we can go over this real quick, and then we can keep looking. Uh, This has got the overall ranking. And uh, Ardo Geronin came in first. Timo Lautimus came in second. And then Adam Glass from the USA came in third. Now, interesting side note about Ardo Gironin winning this contest. He also ran the competition. And wow. uh, Jason Dingy told me that he drank liquor the entire day. That's awesome. The entire day. And yeah. not only did he win, he didn't even need to take all of his attempts. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's so like, that's like a pickup artist get-together. That's like he would fit in with the pickup artists. You know, you got like a handle of Jack there. You got, you know, a couple of beers, you know, just doing grip stuff, busting each other's balls. It's a good time. It's a good time. Good on, good on you, Otto. That's a real athlete right there. Drinking liquor during the competition. Wait a minute. Kind of there was a handle you. of liquor. There was some cans of beer. And then what were you playing? <laughs> oh, my God. I can't take these from the car. It's completely messing up my stilo. Um, I was saying it reminds me of a pickup artist get together. Yeah. You have a handle of liquor, you have, you know, beers, yeah, you know, busting everybody's balls, having a good time. I'm saying Ardo would fit in with us. It would be a, oh. it would be an honor to have him. You said a, busting each other's part. balls? Yes, yeah. I thought you said tra- training grip with each other's balls. What is wrong with my hearing now? I don't know if it's your hearing or... Or did I seriously some misremember something since I just made it four seconds? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It could be the connection, but I don't know. I wasn't talking about whacking anybody off. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, uh, good on Ardo. That's a real athlete right there. You got, you got liquor at the competition. It's like, uh, kind of reminds me of when Keith Hernandez used to smoke in the dugout. Remember that, Jed? How about it? How about it, man? I remember it. I remember it like that. That right there, I remember crystal clear from my childhood. Keith Hernandez yep, smoking exactly. cigarettes in the dugout. <laughs> oh, 
Well, good on Ardo, though, man. That dude's strong. How could that be allowed? How was that possible? What, drinking liquor? No, no, no. I don't. People can drink what they oh, want to. Smoking cigarettes. Smoking cigarettes uh, in the dugout. Isn't that crazy? I, I do. You ever remember yeah. anybody else doing it besides Keith Hernandez? Oh God, you'd have to probably go back, like you know, decades. But I yeah. want to say, like during, like definitely not when I was a kid, but right. years before. Right. I know I saw pictures of guys in the NFL that would smoke while they were on the bench. Oh, like so, um. The guy from the Steelers with no teeth. Oh, like Jack Lambert? You talking about Jack Lambert? Yeah, Jack Lambert. Yeah. Oh wow, I don't know. I think I think I saw him smoking funny. one time. Yeah, yeah, that that could be. But I heard, you know, Kevin Mitchell. What I heard was Kevin Mitchell, who was also on the Mets. You yeah. know, and we all know about Doc Gooden and Daryl Strawberry. You know, but I heard Kevin Mitchell would drink liquor, like, during games and stuff, you know. So, you know, he, well, I don't know. Maybe uh, Ardo was ch- channeling his inner Kevin Mitchell. Kevin Mitchell, that's so interesting, dude. You know, that kind of brings up a grip feat in, its, in itself with Kevin Mitchell. Do you remember the time that he caught the fly ball on a dead run barehanded? Yep. Yeah, I do. Yeah. And he that had was to that because br- his glove was out of position, yeah. Yes. And he just fuck. Yep. He just turned around and just heaved it right back into the infield. Yep, I remember that. That um, dude was a freak. Dude, he, he had that breakout too, man. year, man. Was, like, like, like right. I, they, everybody talks about McGuire and Conseco with the steroids. They never bring up Kevin Mitchell. Yeah, he did have a breakout year. How about wasn't it like Brady Anderson too? Who was like. He used to hit, like, seven home runs a year, and all of a sudden he hit, like, 51 or something. Yes, Brady Anderson as well, yes. Dodgers yeah. ripped to the bone, dude. Rip, yeah. r- like, he was cut like cake, man. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so Ardo. Ardo uh, channeling his inner major leaguer and uh, drinking liquor at a competition. All right. Real athlete stuff right there. <laughs> Take notes. Take notes, kids at home. We're all taking the wrong supplements. We got to get on that uh, Goldschlager or whatever that was that Ardo <laughs> had at the Arnold this year. Good stuff. That's pretty great. So Adam Rankings. Glass is out there. What? I said yeah, Adam, Adam Glass, Glass is there. Is there. Yeah. Looks like he got third overall. That's yeah, cool. third. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. I heard it was. Uh, Go ahead, Jen. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. It's just we I we walked over each other. I couldn't. I didn't make out exactly what you said, but I heard the, the crusher that was used was quite slippery. Um, so Luke and I were talking like maybe they uh, they cleaned it real good. You know how you're supposed to clean the the crusher now prior to the competition. That's what oh, I did. Okay. The one that's I had good recently. To know. Yeah. Yep. New thing. Oh, it definitely it changes things. There's no two ways about it. Yet you, you know. You clean it out and then put some oil in there. That'll that'll definitely make your lips go down. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, let's go on to the women. Uh, the first place uh, ranking was Hilda Holtebo from Norway. She had uh, and she came in twenty eighth overall. Then Mervy Pecky, which I met her in Columbus this year at the, at the Arnold competition. Uh, she came in second. She's from Finland, and she finished 30th overall. And then Patricia Luxner from Austria, she came in third, and she came in 32nd overall. So the women from the competition finished very well on top of everything else, against the men. So, again, it was yeah, big. Hilda, Hilda at 28th and Mervy at 30th and Patricia at 32nd overall. Really, really impressive stuff. Most definitely, yeah. It sounds like a, it sounds like a good competition, like there were a lot of competitors there, huh? There was a lot of competitors. Jason said that he... There was an hour between warm-ups and his first attempt on, I think it was, he said, the crusher. Oop-da. So, 
It, wow. Yeah, there were a lot of, of competitors going. It was cool that Jason was out there too, huh? Yeah. He's going to be a legend, yes. Yeah, yeah he's, he's going to be at Legends. Yeah, he and his wife both went there, and they'll be at Legends. Um, once again, he got he got delayed like five hours or something like that for this international oh, okay. flight. The same thing happened when he went to Russia for Worlds in May. Oh, that's awesome. It's got to suck. Um, Best yeah. Lifter Award went to Petri Rantalanen for the men, and then Mervy Pecky for the women. There were 47 lifters in total, and 11 were women. Uh, Very cool. Also got a rundown we on world in- records and top five performances here, but it looks like it gets cut off. I don't think I don't think that everything's there. Okay. Were were you guys able to find anything else as far as results from that competition, like a concise rundown? I just had a well, PDF normally I up would, here. Yeah, I was going to say, normally I would print them out, but I just I, I had to leave so early this morning, and I'm still in the car, so. I do have a, a PDF up here that kind of oh. lays everything out. Unfortunately, these names, though, I would butcher every damn one of these. Oh, a, 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 a quick, a quick overall. We'll just do the, I suppose, the top three, maybe. Huh? Yo, I just found it. It's um, it's under Circo Peterman, or it's, it's posted by Circo Peterman, and it's all the way back to August nineteenth at four fifty-two p.m. You can see if anybody wants to watch it or t- check it out, that's listening to the show right now, then go to Circo's page. It's the one. He's got like three pages. It's the one where. Um, let me tell you what his avatar is, his profile picture. Well, even Dolly Chung was out there, huh? Yeah, Dolly Chung went out as well. Yep. So it's the one where Circo is standing in front of, like, a farm tractor or, or a yellow construction vehicle. That's the one. That's the profile that you want. Because I think he's got three profiles on Facebook. But go ahead, Alan. Go ahead and cover it. Oh, do it. Okay. All right. So uh, top three finishers at the- Ardo Geronin, this is overall. Ardo Geronin, Timu Latimus, my, my close guy. Very we close. Had, uh, sure. Ad, Adam Glass. <laughs> uh, in the in the gold bar lift, it was uh, Tommy Tuomi, Hari Tuonen, and Ardo Geronin. Uh, Iron Mind Axel, Tommy Tuomi, Hari Tuonen, and Adam Glass. The finished ball, I don't even, I'm not even going to try with that, that first part of that. Yeah, the finish ball was uh, Tommy. Oh, okay, somebody else, somebody help me out here. I'm just being terrible with these names. I love it. I got Circo Peterman. I got Stefan. Yeah, no, I'm not even. I'm done. I'm done. Where are you covering the top three, right? I wouldn't even. I wouldn't even be close. Yeah, this is just. Like it's just, embarrassing. I like to just fire him out, dude. So Tommy Rudha. Root. Root. Huh? root, root. He's so small, I can't <laughs> see it, dude. You were worse than me. <laughs> Zirko Peterman and Stefan Falka. <laughs> you even put a letter in that wasn't there. <laughs> well, it's so small, it's like I, I got to get my glasses. But JC broke them when she was like two, so I don't I don't have any. Um, and then the the crusher was two inch for women, and two inch for women and two point five for men. It says. Ardo came out on top. Timo Laudamus was second, and then Thomas Larson. Thomas Larson with like almost like nine and three quarters inch hands. Did we talk about that? Did you tell? Did we tell you guys that uh, we measured his hands out to the Arnold, and they were like almost ten inches long. That's ridiculous. Jeez, freak, total freak. His He's hands are, ten, are almost ten inches long. To. Yeah, dude. Thomas Larson. What size shoe did he wear? Oh, I don't know. I didn't put his shoes on. I'm just wondering because he must be hung like a Hebrew priest. (laughs) (laughs) Show's getting (laughs) R-rated. And I'd love 
love to read this one that's all colorful, guys, but I cannot tell you. I, I have no idea what this says. These images, the the words are shrunk down so, so small. I, I just really don't know. But everybody can check that out. Probably on a probably on a laptop screen be able to see them better, but I, I got my smartphone here. Thanks a lot, smartphone. <laughs> Tons of clips. Sir, I mean, Circo just does a fantastic job covering the sport. He's like a great ambassador of the sport. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Tons of pictures, tons of reports, tons of videos. Funny stuff. Shaking hands with this one dude, and it looks like he's crying because the dude's squeezing his hand so hard, and Bardo can't hold it together. He's smiling off to the side. It's great. <laughs> great stuff. And he loves that key pinch. Puts that key pinch up. Whether he's got a trainer or not, he makes sure to put those picture and videos up a key pinch, man. <laughs> well, as, he lo- as long as he tags you and all of them, Chad, that's all that matters. I wonder what the allure of the key pinch is exactly. I mean, just disregarding any any carryover or not carryover, leaving that argument out of it. I wonder what it is about the key pinch that excites people. Titty twisters. Okay, Could you be. win. <laughs> I was thinking, I was thinking maybe it had more to do with sort of like you know, like if you ever watch like the the, the movies with like the kung fu movies where guys are like trying to put their thumbs through another dude's eyeballs, you know? Yeah. I was thinking it's that. It's having like. You know, those thumbs that you could just absolutely destroy somebody's skull with? You know? You think that's, you think it's related to that? <laughs> I definitely didn't think of that, but it's, it's fun to go with it, I guess. <laughs> well, I just got home, guys, so maybe I can see if I can find any of these results so that we can talk about some specifics. Well, one thing I was going to do was uh, check and see what videos we had to see if there were any cool videos that were posted. But as I'm seeing mostly, well, here's one. See, this is an event that I either forgot about or had never seen. This is the Mini V-Bar. And it looks like it might be like a three-eighths piece of steel that's maybe three inches long. And you wrap your hand around it like a miniature V-bar, and then uh, lift it up. So it's like a... Oh, wow. Meat, huh. It's kind of like, like, like a... Meat meat. Like a meat hook is what I was thinking right out of game. Yeah, it's yeah similar concept to a meat hook. Uh, kind of like a giant stub. Okay, so they all things that suck, really. Okay. I like the concept of the record breakers. That's kind of what you're doing at your competition in September, right, James? Yeah, yeah. We're going to do a, a record breakers event, and it's going to be you pick uh, three out of five events. And those events are grippers, zero, two and a half inch crusher, um, lever top, and, or was that five? Did I just say five? Or is it four? You had an axle in there, didn't you? No, we didn't have axle. We were going to do axle if we could have got Rich Williams out. We were oh, okay. Axle. Yeah, we were going to put that in there, but, you know, it doesn't look like that's going to happen. So, so yeah. I don't know. It's Jason's event, so, you know. All I did was name the events. That's pretty much the extent of my involvement. <laughs> We really had no idea that you you uh, named the events, bro. Really? There was no clues. Whatever, Tom. You thought that you thought that someone else came up with the Arm Highland Grip Strong Wrestling Power Bands? <laughs> I thought I thought you meant that you chose the events that were being contested. No, I didn't. Actually, J- J- uh, Jason picked the events. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, Jason picked the events because he had said he goes. He had he had said he said you know well you you still haven't you know done a contest with the lever top and I said no I haven't and I haven't trained with it I, I just trained with it this week but but I said no I haven't even trained with it and um, 
He said, yeah, we're going to throw that on there, so you better start training it. And I'm like, oh, okay, sure. So I got like a month. Great. You know? Cool. So. I thought for sure you would no, find that one. My next five no, joking no. on you is, is lost now. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jason, this is Jason's show pretty much, you know? That's cool. So. Yeah. That's the reason why I was dropping off my Euro to him today. He yeah. was going to figure out which Euro he wanted to use because I have one, Gary has one, uh, Bob has one, and he has one. And he was going to take them over to the – well, first we were testing them out today to see which one we thought was the best, and they thought mine was the best, so they're, they're going to, uh, to, to weigh it and, and uh, you know, all that. So Now uh... – did you make your Euro? Did you buy it from someone? Or I got it from Delmar. You got it from Delmar. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I don't I know like where this. Delmar got it from. Does it? What what inserts does it have? Uh, it doesn't have the quick change ones. It's got the uh, old black ones. Yeah. Yeah. So Is do what uh, do what Gil Goodman did. It's the same thing I did on those James, where you just cut a big notch out of them. Okay. And, and that way you can just sl- – yeah, you know what I'm saying? So envision you got the big you got the big circular piece, right, and it's got the two-inch hole in the center? Yeah. Just cut a two-inch slot from the hole straight oh, down yeah, on each yeah, one of those. Delmar actually did that already. Oh, okay, then you're good to go. Yeah. All right, all right. Yeah, Delmar had yeah. done that before he uh, sold it to me, so. And I didn't oh, really even want a Euro, but he was selling it for like 90 bucks or something. I was like, oh, i got to buy that. So. That's not bad, yeah. Yeah, yeah he yeah. unloaded a bunch of stuff. Um, Luke actually picked up his flask. Yeah. Probably, I don't know, it's probably darn close to a year ago that he that he picked it up. Yeah, this was more than that. I got it probably two plus years ago. Oh. But it just, and I think that's probably why the guys like it. It's got good texture to it. Right. I, I barely used it. It was sitting behind my dumbbell rack, so... I mean, yeah. I do most of my pinch training I do with plates, so so I really don't mess with it that much. I just right. figured I'd have it for a rainy day or something. So. Well, it's uh, the reason I ask is I always like to I like I like to hear the story behind people's euros because you know back in the day you can only get them from David Horn, and then yep. I started making them. I started making them with uh, you know rubber matting, and I, I cut all of the discs out by hand. I never had a machine to help me. So they're yeah. all uh, they're all cut by hand, and well, Jason's well, I, got one of yours. Jason, yeah, I yours. definitely, yeah. I I definitely remember him picking one of mine up. He's got the ones with the the plastic inserts, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I remember I remember him picking it up. The one, but the 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 further back ones, or if someone like, so the one what what I was wondering was, uh, um, what's I forget. Who's home gym hero? He's from down that way. Mike Lagowski. Yes, yeah. So he bought one from me years ago, and it actually got lost in the mail. Like, that was a big pain in the ass. It's like the only time anything's ever got lost in the mail. Yeah. Um, so that, and I didn't know if maybe you bought it from him. That's that's the one. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah that's a pisser, wow. man. I sent a bunch of equipment out to John Oka one time. Uh-huh. It was like two hundred and something dollars worth of stuff that I had from you know from arm wrestling training and stuff for years, right. and you know some of it actually had a little sentimental value because of a, a friend of mine his his father actually machined out some of the stuff and and um, I, I sent it out to John because he's just been such a gracious guy. I mean he's just been what a generous guy John Oka is. I don't know if you guys know him well, but awesome guy, um, awesome guy. Yeah. So I went to send him this stuff that I knew he had, he had wanted, and and uh, it. The next thing I know, I'm like, dude, did it get there yet? Did it get there yet? Well, he found out that uh, I forgot how it worked. I think I had the tracking number. One of us discovered that uh, they they found the the box and the label and all that other stuff in um, San Francisco, but conveniently, all the equipment wasn't found. It was never recovered. Mm. So. Yeah, so I know how that one goes, Jed. That's a that's a that really that's sucks. a bothersome one. Yeah, it is. It's, it really does. So Ugh. 
Yeah. So, so yeah, man. So we got that coming up too. That's in less than a month now. Well, and that's a that's a GSI sanctioned competition, everybody. And um, probably should have started the show off with this, but uh, we just launched a brand new website <clears throat> for Grip Sport International. At let me get it exactly it is gripsportint.com. Gripsportint.com. The brand new website is up. And we'll be adding more to it, of course. Yeah. But uh, make sure that you get on there and and follow Grip Sport IG on Instagram. And uh, going to see big things coming your way from Grip Sport International, formerly North American Grip Sport, coming your way real soon. Yep. Absolutely. I saw that on your Instagram earlier this week. Yep. Mm. And then also, uh, Jerome just hit me, and he said that the the rules for the the coin stack challenge are on the Minotaur's Grip Training and Arm Wrestling page on Facebook, but I can't get that page to load for some reason. So, like, I can slide it down, like, one time, and then it just dies. I can't find anything else, so I'm trying to bring it up. <clears throat> <clears throat> I don't know why it won't come up because, uh, I mean, it's got, like, old posts from 2017 that are showing for examples, but then when you go to the page, nothing shows up. It's weird. Huh. Yeah, I was actually just looking for um, the Bone Hill results, too. And for some reason, like, because I'm on, I'm on my phone, but I can't get them to, like, increase in size, you know? Right. Yeah, that was doing it to me earlier as well. Some uh, some other feats, if you guys don't care, I'll, I'll rattle off some other feats yeah, go I have on it, my yeah. list. Yeah, I wish Tommy, we could do more on Bone Hill. Maybe we can do more on Bone Hill next week. You guys want yeah, to do maybe that? When, yeah, like we can do the record breakers or something, that, yeah. at least that part, part since it won't load. But uh, I saw that Tommy Jennings did an inch dumbbell row here recently, probably within the last month wow. or so. I've had these notes for a while. We haven't done feats for a while. So that was pretty awesome to see that because that's a pretty rare feat. Um, Sam Parker. You guys remember that name, Sam Parker? We talked about him. Yeah. He kind of came on yeah, from England. Like a big power lifter, dude. He did 21 reps, and it was kind of like a rep-out deal. He just went till he couldn't get anymore. He got 21 repetitions on two 20-kilogram plates. Really freaky. Wow. Was this the guy that just, like, uh, hubbed some shallow 45 and then curled it a bunch, too? Is that the same dude? Oh, I don't know if I saw that one. I'm not sure. This okay. guy is like a, I think it is like a, a bench-press power lifter guy. Yeah, he's a, yeah. he's a big jack-looking dude. I mean, you could, yeah, he's strong, no doubt about it. I think on Instagram he's fat muscle uh, programming or something, or fat muscle coaching or something like that. P H A T, fat muscle. Okay. Um, and then I, I I can't remember if we've brought this guy up. I thought we did. R dot Sinold is yep. an absolute gripper monster, and I guess he just That's... certified on the number three. And it might have been the easiest. And the three point five, didn't he? Yeah. Three point five was that the three point five? Three and three point five at the same day. Yeah. We, well, we I only saw the him. number three video, which was scary enough. I mean, it didn't even. It wasn't even a. There wasn't even a, like an expression on his face. Yeah. I didn't know who it was. I guess his name's David something. Shamey, Yeah. We've we've talked about him before because he did a credit card set of a four, and we talked about him probably a couple of months ago. And uh, yeah, but it was, it was, I, yeah, I don't think it was a rated four and, and all that other stuff. But, you know, from what I've seen of him, I mean, you don't know what – I guess you don't know what four you're going to get in the mail from Iron Mind. But, you know, he's he's certainly, you know I, – I Definitely don't been see squatting 440 like by him. 60, hasn't he? What's that? He's definitely been squatting 440 by 60, hasn't he? 
<laughs> yes, Dude, yes, he has. That is brilliant. That's Alan. it. That is there is, brilliant. there is well no. Today. Yeah, there's no other explanation, Alan. It would have nope. to be that. <laughs> for that for card anyone card that's new up. and hasn't it hasn't been around Grip for long, that random statement that Alan just made was he sure has been squatting 440 for 50, hasn't he? And the reason why is because Joe Kinney came out with the most outlandish statements ever regarding his testosterone for breakfast protocol where he would start each day off on an empty stomach squatting 440 pounds for 50 repetitions day in and day out. Day in and day out this man would do this weighing a buck 25 or whatever he weighs. Yeah. And you'd have to do that on an empty stomach or you'd be puking like you wouldn't freaking believe. Well, you can't produce the testosterone <laughs> increase if you, if you got food in your stomach because, sure. <laughs> you know, it's not, uh, it's not vegan that way or something. <laughs> it's not <laughs> vegan. <laughs> the raw vegan squats for breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> Well, there's no um, gluten either. It's gluten free. No gluten. That's what I meant. Was gluten. Um, he, was, he was training gluten. All right. Uh, yeah. I'm going to make a prediction about Living Legends. Go for it. Ah. Tim Butler won't be there. Oh no. He won't show. I'm going to make a prediction why? right now. You guys want to know why? Yes. Tell me in. Because he's not going to be able to walk. <laughs> Because, Why? Because he put up a video end. today of an yeah. anvil lift where not only did it look like the anvil was completely out of his control during the descent, but once it hit the ground, all the weight he had added to the anvil splayed out and almost took his friggin' toes off. Right. Okay. So the I note I put was Tim Butler's trying to break his toes. Ah, I don't even know how much weight it was. I think it was a 140-pound anvil with maybe 90 pounds added or something like that. And Jeez. it was probably the most dangerous thing I've seen all week. Next to the video that, I, that someone sent me of a dude jumping off a building, probably 20 stories up, hitting the ground. It sounded like someone, you know, it sounded like Andre the Giant paintbrush someone right across the face. It was like the loudest smack you'll ever hear. And then the camera ran over to the guy, and he was still alive. Um, I'll send why? it later. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. I think it was a suicide attempt, but um, oh, I don't even remember okay. how I, I brought that just... up now. That's, that okay, happened. I thought it was just a hold my beer sort of thing. No. No. Okay. I don't even know why I brought it up. but uh, <laughs> And then I saw that Rob McMurrin rode. Yes. 245s. He did a row yeah, yeah. with 245s. And I don't think I've ever seen that before. I, I posted on there. I was like, I don't think I've seen that before, dude. That's pretty cool. That's crazy. Yeah, I saw that too. And oh, then that awesome. uh, Wade Gilliam did a hand-to-hand uh, transfer. Not a mid-air transfer, but he, he picked, them, picked old school Yorks up with one hand and then put them in the other hand and set them down under control with a good pause. Wow. And the well, I have hand. a new... I have a new appreciation for that feat after, you know, because I'm bringing those old school Yorks up to uh, to Anthony Vastaturo uh, at Legends, and I I just have a new appreciation for that feat because, my gosh, to keep those plates lined up, even to like do a two hand pinch and then try to hold with one, just keeping those plates lined up and the width of them and the rounded edges. It's yeah. just, it's ridiculous. It is just They're not meant to go together. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So good on Wade. <clears throat> and then, Alan, you mentioned something about a shallow hub 45 lift. Would that have been Luke Reynolds? Was that who, okay, that could be. I, I just remembered seeing some guy, not only did he hub it, but it was like he, he paused because it seemed so easy and then just started to curl it. Like a few times. Well, in my like notes, a, I have Luke Reynolds double shallow forty five hub clean and press. Oh no, I, I, I missed that one then. Maybe it's the same dude, but I didn't see that. Yeah, I'm not sure, buddy. 
And then also, and this is going back, this is probably months ago, Elizabeth Horn doing an, uh, a 54-kilogram inch-style dumbbell one-hand waddle walk. So, like, she, she picked it up in a straddle and then walked with it, like, around knee height. With an inch? With a 54-kilogram inch. Oh, style okay, dumbbell. okay. Maybe a baby inch. Nice. Yeah. And I think that's... Oh, uh, you guys know Nick McKinless? You know that name? I've heard that name. I do, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I, I think he's done his share of arm wrestling, right, James? I don't know where I know the name from, but I do know the name. So, yeah, so I'm not sure if he's an arm wrestler. Okay, so Nick McKinless... I believe him to be, like, extremely good friends with David Horn. I think they're really good friends. Like, they've done training sessions multiple times together at David's Grip Factory. Um, and I just saw him there. I just saw him. He was doing uh, some steel breaking there at David's, I believe, over this weekend. Uh, Nick McKinless used to be a, a regular competitor. I think he's from Australia, or he lived in Australia for a time because he also... I believe he's he's done contests along with uh, Mikhail Siverson, who is the guy who every once in a while pops up and talks about hand size and body weight and stuff like that. Um, but Nick goes by Beyond Strong double uh, 007 on Instagram, and uh, he was like uh, one of the early Mash Monsters stuff like that. Uh, he's also, his job is he's a stuntman for, uh, cool. in the movie industry. So he's done all That's kinds awesome. of, he's been in all kinds of different movies, probably movies that we've all watched and didn't realize that it was a gripster in the movie because he was playing the, the stunt double. But uh, he, I saw he was doing some steel bending recently. You know, he's done lots of, he's done lots of the big grip feats. It's just you don't hear a lot from him because he's just not... He just doesn't put up a lot of videos, but pretty, pretty cool to see him going again. It's a guy that was a bigger name, like like a not a bigger name, but he was more commonly heard of back in like 2003, 2004. So yeah, that's cool, man. That's really I like, cool. I like to see those guys come back and uh, yeah, throw down every. Hey, so often. by the way, possible entry for legends. I was at. Um, a couple of weeks ago, they had uh, the Georgia Strongman and Arm Wrestling Games mm-hmm. at um, the uh, oh, what's, Robbins Air Force Base. That's where it was. And um, one of the guys who was there, a guy named Chris Chandler, uh, I've known Chris since about 2003, uh, a very strong arm wrestler. He, uh, he might become a legend. Along with you because, guys? Well, I don't know yet. I don't know if he's going to come with us or meet us because I don't know if we're, we're on the way for, for him. But, but uh, he is, uh, he, he's, just, he, he's got a big deadlift on him, and he's just sort of getting into to Axel and Saxon Bar, and he's, he's putting up some pretty big numbers on those specific uh, apparatuses. Really? And I know he's closed an HG... 350 before Good so close. just from an mm just a mash monster set so so he's you know it would be cool to see him in the mix i think he would i think a lot of the stuff he doesn't he's very raw at but he's he's just i mean ungodly strong so now, chris chandler you're talking about you said yeah yeah chris yeah chandler. he's friends with Devin Devin yeah. brown jed yeah he is yeah. yeah he actually said amazing things about Devin, Devin Lee Brown. He was saying, like, anything that dude decides to do, he's just going to be one of the best in the world at. Well, yeah, that's, yeah that's, that's, that's definitely the thing about Devin, yeah. Now, <laughs> yeah. this Chris is, this, I see there's a Chris Chandler here. So this, he's the former personal trainer at Smart Sports, and he studied at the University of Wyoming. Yes. He's friends. Yep. He's, is that him? Yep. Okay, yep, he's friends from with Wyoming, Eric from and friends with you, James, Nigel. So that's yep. probably him, right? I'll go ahead and add him up. Yeah. Yeah, and, and he's um, he just he just recently got his hands on like a Saxon bar, and on um, an axle, and you know I mean he's a 
he's like a raw 700 something pound deadlifter and you know i'm pretty sure he's gone a little bit over 400 on an axle and yeah. he says he's never done a two inch saxon bar but he would love to get his hands on one so so we were uh i, I was talking him up i was saying look man you gotta go don't screw around let's go come on yeah how coming. about it man yeah, yeah. so so hopefully he'll come up. He did seem very interested. And, you know, he's been asking me questions since on, on Facebook Messenger. So so it would be very cool to see Chris Chandler get in the mix. And it's it's always good yeah. to see, uh, you know, the crossover between grip and arm wrestling because uh, there's a lot yeah. of it, you know. And I think the communities support each other pretty well. He lives down by you, James? He, he, he lives in Georgia now. Okay. I think he's in Columbus, Georgia now. So but far, uh, right? he's yeah he's it's not too bad I think it's about four to five hours. So, so it's the next state right next state up or down. Um next state down oh. but next state down from the west of North Carolina. So gotcha. the east of North Carolina next state down is is South Carolina but if you're right. in Western Carolina you go south you're in Georgia. Gotcha. So, cool. Yeah. Nice. But. Uh, yeah, that would be cool to see him there. And we did talk pork chop, San Diego, into coming to uh, Legends. That'll be his first event. Nice. That'll be good. I can't wait to meet the guy. So you will meet pork chop, the world's largest Filipino man. He showed up today, and he had cornrows in his hair. So, you know, you think you know a guy, and then he shows up with cornrows in his hair. I got my hair appointment for next week to get cornrows <laughs> put in actually really? yeah i scheduled it on uh, friday of yeah. last week so that'd yeah, be cool. me too yeah i'm gonna get cornrows <laughs> too i mean my hair's really short and i got a hairline like uh, george costanza so it's probably not gonna happen <laughs> yeah i got an issue like that myself yeah hey i got the stack rules right here okay we ready yep thanks to jerome bloom for sending this in The rules. Number one, a stack of coins will be arranged horizontally, totaling a minimum of 30 millimeters, one and an eighth inches in width, to be demonstrated in your video. The first point of contact is to be a metal carabiner, large enough to not hinder the lift and to be placed at the center point of the stack of coins. The lift will be in the key pinch style. The lift will be to a minimum height of eight inches, 203 millimeters. It should be shown that fingers only contact the end coins and that there is no contact between your hand and the carabiner. The total weight should be shown in the same video on a digital scale. Chalk can be used. It should be clearly shown in your video the type of coin that is to be used. Acceptable coins for this challenge are the British 10 pence, the U.S. quarter, the 50 euro cents, 10 Hungarian forint, 5 <laughs> Polish zloty, 10 Czech krone, 2 Danish kroner, 25 Argentinian cents, 5 Russian ruble, 5 South <laughs> African rand, and 1 Australian dollar. I got to hand it what to him for just the, uh, going out of his way and figuring yeah, out what all really? the coin equivalents were. Holy crap, dude. Yeah, right. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah. How many <laughs> buffalo nickels? How many buffalo nickels is that? <laughs> I'm trying to figure that out. Yeah. And, of course, Alan, I don't know if you noticed, but I pronounced every single one of those perfectly according to the, I caught that. the regional uh, pronunciation of each country. So yes, you're very you good, better Red. step your game up. Wow. <laughs> I'm gonna have to. <laughs> well, I'm I'm currently counting my wheat pennies to see how many will be exactly twenty point three centimeters. Do you have a bunch huh. of wheat pennies? <laughs> have you saved? I'm those actually like not doing penny, that, Jared. Uh, piggy bank. No, I, I I do have some old ones, but I don't think uh, I don't think I'm actually going to take them out and count them. I'll yeah. leave that to the professionals to uh, do this list. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I'm glad we have the rules. That's good. Yep, and and who is it, who's at the top of that leaderboard? Do you know? Well, I can tell you right now because he sent that along with it. Right now, the person at the top of the leaderboard is 
Jerome Bloom, 19.4 kilograms slash 42.77 pounds. And right behind him is Goldschlager himself, Ardo Jeronen. In second wow. place. Yeah. What so. do you know? What do you know? Pretty, pretty good. Pretty impressive, man. I thought it was cool. When I saw it, I was like, that's actually a really good idea. Because uh, I used to do, like, to get to, uh, from five 10-pound plates to six 10-pound plates, I would train five 10s, and I would hang weight off the middle 10 with a rope. And then it would try to pull the, the thing out in the center. And I was like, wow. That's, like, taking me back to 2004 right there. Oh, wow. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty cool. Um, well, do you guys... That, uh, that's about ahead. it for me. No, that's, yeah. I'm pretty much blood dry on my feet. So I just went. We went through the whole entire list, guys, for me. I know, I yeah, know there's I, tons of stuff that have taken place, and we didn't catch them, but uh, one day we're going to have to go through and just go through the uh, This Week in Grip hashtags, Alan. You know where we're yeah, at. Yeah, I know. It's been a while. I'm, I'm way behind on that crap, so... Yeah. Um, I had been doing it until recently. I just, you know, I've been been out of town so much lately. It's unbelievable. A lot of traveling. So I'm going to have to get back on that for our next few shows. I was going to look it up real quick this week in grip. <clears throat> well, it's a, it says 1,000 posts, 1,000 plus. It was, it was a lot. I think it just kind of quit tallying after certain period or something like that we talked about that once before yeah yeah we were having trouble figuring out what the actual number was a while ago in fact on my on my instagram it just says followed by and then gives a dude's name it doesn't even give the post okay yeah, people are still using it. It's awesome. It's really cool. And even though we don't cover that, guys, here's the here's the everybody listening. Here's why you want to keep doing that because when people see that, then they can click on that hashtag link, and then they can bring up all of the awesome videos that have taken place. So it isn't just about us going over each post that gets put up with that hashtag in it. It's about showing everyone what an incredible community that we have. Um, uh, that is built around that um, hashtag because yeah. if you go to grip strength hashtag, you're going to see a bunch of stuff that has nothing to do with grip sport. If you go to grip training, there's going to be a bunch of stuff that has nothing to do with grip sport. You're going to see, yeah, right. you'll see cool stuff like Ninja Warrior and stuff like that, but then you'll also see people training with kettlebells. You'll see people performing deadlifts, and then you'll have to sort through all those posts in order to get to someone doing key pinch or yeah. lever top or, you know, any other, you know, shallow hub, whatever. And, and it, it just doesn't come up. But with This Week in Grip, boom, we've got something where a lot of that different stuff will be collected all in one spot. So yeah. thank you to everybody. I do think it would be cool to, to do that, though, in a show coming up, go, go over the uh, – this week in grip hashtag and, and and go over some some of the feats that happened during that week. I think that would be a a, a cool. I know we can't do dedicate whole shows to it, but it would be a cool segment. I think. Yeah, well, yeah. it's like it's like this thing, the stand or submit contest that took place. Um, Glenn the Hunter uh, put this up. They're they're shooting these arrows off of this, you know, some kind. I'm going to call it a slingshot device, but that, there's probably a different name for it, but. You know, they tag that in there, and uh, did you guys see this? It's like uh, an arrow shooting device that you have to pull back with your finger strength. I guess that's a no. Cool. But uh, <laughs> this, uh, um, a couple people actually posted about it, and wherever Glenn the Hunter was at, he ran into Juju Mufu and Tom. So, oh, wow. Yeah. And somehow, uh, Tom is being labeled the Chalk Whisperer. I don't know how that's possible, but that's what it reads here. So there's a little controversy there. I see how uh, Luke came in. Don't be giving my Chalk Whispering tickets away, Tom Boyden. So Yeah. But, yeah. Well, I will reserve comments on Tom Boyden. 
But you guys go ahead. Okay. Um, what else? What else? Alan, anything else? No, I, I don't have anything. I've been so far behind. No. Okay. All right. That's it for me. Anything for the good of the sport, James? For the good of the sport? Yeah. Yes. Come support the Arm Highland Grip Strong Wrestling Power Games. You won't regret it. We will have a lot of fun. We will lift a lot of weights. We will lift stones. We will arm wrestle. Gary's getting it catered with barbecue food. We're going to try to sneak liquor and beer in there. It's going to be awesome. And tell us, tell us where that is again, James, and when and where. That is at the new and used gym store, a very large uh, warehouse in very picturesque Statesville, North Carolina, conveniently located off of Interstate 40 and 77. So we would love to see you guys out, come out. It would be a really great thing. Um, uh, it would just be uh, – it's going to be a lot of fun, you know. Regardless of what goes down and who does what, we're going to have a great time. And we always do, so please come out and enjoy and support. It's free. Like, it's like we're, this isn't like some money-making thing. It's just come on out and do stuff. Enter for free, you know. So, so we would love to have you guys come out. Everybody, please come support. Not for the sake of our wallets, but just, you know, for the sake of the event and to have a good time. Awesome, man. Um... Maybe I'll reach out to Chad Woodall about that since it's going to be in his neighborhood. It'd be a good uh, tune-up contest for him because he's playing yes. in King Kong. Yes. We should have Plus Chad it'll, Woodall uh, distract come. him. It'll it'll be a weekend of no training for him because he'll be messing with you guys. Oh, he'll be training. You you leave our practices and our training sore, <laughs> broken down and hungover. That's how we leave you. <laughs> nice. And then, but a big uh, smile on your face. And then the weekend before that, we got Living Legends in Worcester, Ohio. It's Friday and Saturday, September, what is it? Would it be 5th and 6th, sixth guys, and or would it be 6th and 7th? I'm having trouble. I think it's 6th and 7th. 6th and 7th. Pretty seventh, sure it's 6th so. and 7th, yep. Two-day competition. And we're two and weeks we'll, after. We'll see you guys there, James and Gary and Pork Chop, right? Yes. No Jason for that one? No, no. You know, Jason, school starts back up for Jason, and because he's a school administrator, he's got to tend to the children, you know. Yeah, yep. Tough for the teachers to take vacation during the year, that's for sure. Yeah, how cool would it be, though, if you went to a school and Jason was your assistant principal? Yeah, dude, he's got a <laughs> Simpson cartoon made for him. Yeah. That's, that's right there, cool enough. Yep. Well, I'm trying to get... Uh, trying to get some of my lifters to grow some balls and talk to the, um, <laughs> like, I guess it's like the elementary, or, uh, it's one of the school's assistant principals. I guess he played for an NFL team or, or was drafted into the NFL and played four years of Division One football at, like, Alabama or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, just a man mountain. He's, I guess he's, like, 6'5". 290 pounds, something like that. I'm like, get him in here, man. Let's get his hands on some of these grip tools. So yeah. we'll see. Maybe we'll see. Uh, maybe you'll see a video coming out with some freakazoid walking around the town of Wailusing, gripping, gripping onto some inch dumbbells. Well, that would be cool. Cool. All right. Well, guys, great show. Thanks again. This has been uh, episode, what was it? 106, right, Alan? 106, yeah. Yep. Well, the show's yours, Alan. Take it away, dude. Work. All right, everybody. Well, thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Comment down below, and uh, we'll see you again next week. Talk to you later.